Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Charlotte Roval for the, uh, I don't even know what number we're on anymore. For the next round of the Arksaw Elite Series Season 27 season, we have about, we only have three races to go, and we're starting to find out, um, exactly what the Season 28 season will look like. There's not going to be nearly as many cars, um... Uh, but we're thinking 30-ish, 28-ish, 30-ish, somewhere in there. Cars on the grid. And then there will be one-off races. Obviously, a lot of people are, um... Going to be doing what they need to do to get themselves on the grid in the one-off races. Each team will be required to bring a third car, etc. A couple of rule changes for next year that will be coming into effect this year. Uh, for this race in particular. On road courses, if there is a serious incident where a car is immobilized in a dangerous position, we will bring out a safety car. Um, just because that will make... Um, simply because it's going to be safer for us all that way. Also, if there is bad driver conduct, penalties will be assessed uh, on track, like a drive through penalty. Also, the Room of Doom system will not be used for the remainder of the season, uh, but will be implemented in a different facility next year. The teams have protested in order to get it removed for this season because they didn't vote on it uh, at the start of the year. So Room of Doom is now off for the remainder for the remaining three races. With that being said, let's take a look at the starting grid. Sean Perkins is starting from last. He crashed on his qualifying run, and Julius Castro has been incredibly slow all weekend. Um, Rich Roy, again, very slow run on the qualifying run, and Ethan Keiterman has been fast this weekend, but uh, struggled. Ryan Matthews and Nick Pericles, followed by Aiden Shepard and Carol Abbott in front of them. We have Joshua Michaels and Sean Ard with Zayden Davidson and Jesse Turner. Allison Holiday and Austin Sanders with uh, Anthony Griffith and Greg Woodard. We have Ethan Moore and the 22 of Lou Grainer. Follow, or in front of them, we have Eric Monaco and Bobby Jones. Takumi Hirano and Jamison Moore. Um, Ingrid Hadeland and the 80 car of Tyler Thaber. Ryan Griffin and that would be Lance Calvin, the Indy 250 winner with Zachary Fitzwater and points leader Noah Hart. Hart can, um, if he has a good run here, he might be able to lock up the championship at Talladega. Uh, Caitlin Tannerhill, Chase Dunbar. I think that's, yeah, Chase Dunbar, William Brock, Carter Fitzgerald, Bethany Woodard, DJ Curtis, who will be driving a Red Bull car in the one-off races next year. So he is going to be just coming back for one-off races. Russ Pliskin, um, Vince Fries, uh, Quinn Kelly, Jared Vershagen, Gretchen Faust, uh, Samit Ozkin, and in the front row we have Pip Longstocking and Tim Morse. With that being said, let's get down to the green flag. Morse and Longstocking will lead the field down to the green here, and we are off as they enter Tum's Heartburn Corner. Uh, it's a good start by mainly the front of the field. Obviously, this track gets spread out pretty quickly here due to the way that the track is kind of situated. But overall, a good start. We're not seeing too many issues, but once we get to the backstretch chicane, that's where we're going to expect it. We had a little bit of rain before the race, so it is a little damp out there, but... 29 laps around this track should go by pretty quickly if we don't get a safety car. However, with how narrow this track is at certain points, I would not count on not having a safety car here. As the field kind of rockets to one of the first zones that we're concerned about. Um, we go back a little bit here. I'm seeing no issues. And so far, so good throughout the field. Great job by everybody to get through the field here as they rock it down towards the backstretch chicane, which is an area that we are going to be concerned about. And here they go through that backstretch chicane. Tim Morse making a move on long stocking. So far, so good. And, I, oh, long stocking, very slow there. Morse does take the lead. And uh, there are a couple of cars hit the wall there. I think Perkins did, but other than that, it's going to be Tim Morse leading the first lap of this event over Gretchen Faust, Sam at Ozkin, Jared Vershagen gets by the um, 26 car there. Pliskin does as well. Quinn Kelly hits the wall, the Ohio winner, the surprise Ohio winner. 
uh, right there as well. So, ooh, Fitzgerald in the fence. Fitzgerald is in the fence. Down the infield section here, the Bank of America infield section here. On to the uh, back part here. It actually looks like Gretchen Faust is closing in. The Daytona winner is closing in on Morse there, which is going to be interesting as we keep going. But here we go. Again, very, very strange little track this can be. Ooh, looks like the 00 is getting a little sideways. Oh, we got a car in the fence. We got a couple cars in the fence. I think everybody got going again there. Oh, we got more cars spinning out on the oval here. That's William Brock. Everybody does a good job missing him there. We're going to have to go back and see what happened. No need for a yellow there, but Brock is going to drop all the way to the back. Down into the chicane again. Got to be oh so careful you don't get into trouble there. Grainer and Bethany Woodard were doing battle there. And on to the front, on to the uh, turn, the oval three and four. Oh, looks like we got a car with damage up there. That's Noah Hart. Oh, our point leader, Noah Hart's bringing it in. Jesse Turner as well. I think he was involved in that um, coming back into the oval turn one. We're going to have to go back and see what happened to him here. Ooh, that happened in front of him. Okay, that's Quinn Kelly going around. Oh, and Brock goes around there on the inside. I don't know what happened there. And that's where Hart got the damage. That's where Hart got the damage. How did Brock end up down in the inside wall is a good question, though. And, oh, he just lost it and got into that inside wall. Surprise. Good thing there was no other cars in the way down there, because that could have been really bad. Quinn Kelly is bringing it down pit road. Of course, he's had some damage as well. Didn't be, Wasn't able to get down pit road last time, so he is bringing it down this time. So that's not good for him. Oh, I heard a car get into the fence in front there. I think that was Anthony Griffith maybe getting into the fence there. Also, it looks like Abbott slow off the corner there as well. Um, Got to be careful you don't get into too much trouble around this track because it will come out and bite you. Also, Ryan Matthews pit due to a tire going down as well. Now what you want to see... This early in the race, there's Noah Hart and Jesse Turner. Hart not in the points. That's going to be a struggle for him. Here they go on to the front stretch, though, now. It is Faust. It is Faust trying to catch Tim Morse there. Jared Vershagen up to third gets by Oskin, followed by Vince Freeze, uh, along with a couple other drivers there. Oh, contact there. Contact there. Good thing that didn't end worse. We had another incident down here. This is Sean Perkins getting into the chicane, the backstretch chicane. And here comes Julius Castra. Perkins gets into the wall. Really, though, none of these accidents have really been anything short of a racing deal, I think, there. So that one, again, racing deal. Got to give credit where credit's due to Jared Vershagen. Vershagen is outperforming his teammate Vince Freeze right now. Now, granted... On the track, he's also the third fastest car while Verche well, Freeze is the fifth fastest. Oh, we got the two pass cars getting into the wall there. Uh, also, got to give a shout out to DJ Curtis, fourth fastest car. He is retiring from full time competition, but uh, he's going for the Triple Crown next year and going for his fourth American 700 victory. That should be something to watch once we go to Michigan because obviously Fontana is getting reconstructed, so Michigan will be the host of that race. Uh, that should be an interesting event because it's very similar to Fontana in ways, but, um, it also has more banking and a lot more speed. So, uh, he will be going for his fourth American 700 victory, and I think undisputed he'd be better than Sean Perkins in that regard. Uh, Perkins, uh, is going to be running in the Silver Speed team next year, so Perkins will also be going for the Triple Crown. He, all he needs is the Indy 250. Look how close now Gretchen Faust has come to the 15 car of Tim Morse there. This is where things are going to get massively close now. Massively, massively close. And now there's... Oh, Faust gets into the fence, though. Faust gets into the fence. You don't want to do that, but... Don't want to do that at all. On the, on the uh, uh, oval turns now, it's going to be very difficult. 
Gonna be very difficult, I think, Faust to get anywhere near this time, but this is where Faust has been really strong. It's been through this bus stop where uh, Morse has been very slow through there, although Faust didn't look like she did much better through there. And we have another incident down here. That is the 16. Oh, we got a lot of cars down there that are having issues, but luckily they would all drive away. On board with Rich Roy as he comes down to the scene. There's the accident taking place, and this was kind of silly. He just kind of drives right in. Oh, he maybe caught the curb there, and that actually got a lot of the cars going again. Uh, was that move, because they were about to throw a safety car there, but because they were all trapped on that curb. And luckily, they didn't need to do that. Thank you, Rich Roy. You might have ruined your race doing it, but you prevented a safety car. Morse now has been massively held up by Gretchen Faust. And this is where things are going to get interesting because now will Kostra be a pain? Oh, he gets into the fence! That's going to hurt Faust more than Morse. Morse took a really aggressive move down there, but... Yeah! Yeah! That was a good move by Morse there. Very veteran-like move there by Tim Morse. But here comes Gretchen Faust. What's Faust going to do with Kostra is a good question now. This is not a place that uh, you want to be too aggressive down here, because if you do, you're going to wreck somebody. And this is really bringing Vershagen and now Freeze into the fray of this battle as well, so just be careful. And we're hearing that there has been a warning given to Julius Costa for not seating to the lap, to uh, lead lap cars, so not obeying blue flags. So if Costa does not let Faust buy... There might be a penalty awarded for Julius Kostra, so you got to be real careful if you're a lap car now, because they are not afraid to throw drive through penalties out there now. And here we go. He does seed the inside to Faust, but not after holding up Faust for a very long time there. And how is he going to do with Vershagen, I wonder, because I'm guessing the officials want him to let Vershagen by pretty quick, too. Doesn't look like he's going to play that game either. So, try and not be a jerk out there, Julius. I know you're an American 700 champion, kind of surprisingly, but really don't be a jerk. Kind of the rule of the game here. And you kind of are right now. And they're now giving a warning for blocking the 48. So, Kostra, I think, might be getting a penalty at this rate if he does not... Oh, and, and then he's all over the road, too. And now he's bringing up... Wow, that's a wide line there by Faust entering that corner. Up oh, right there, Black Flag 94. Black Flag 94 for causing um, Black Flag for Blue Flag violations. So 94 will have to make a, a stop go penalty. And here comes Costa into service penalty. Again, this should just be a stop and then go penalty again here. Yep, right there. That's what we're talking about. Stop-go penalty there. Also, Fitzgerald coming in from 7th. Maybe this is a short pit move by Carter Fitzgerald. But, um... Yeah, that's a very interesting move there by Carter. Because I would not have surprised... I was surprised at that early of a move by Carter Fitzgerald, to be honest with you. On lap 13, Tim Morse is starting to really struggle with Gretchen Faust now. And here we go down into, uh, back onto the oval now, the infield section over, and this is actually causing, uh, I'm sorry, that's Carol Abbott, not Faust, this is actually allowing Faust to catch uh, Morse pretty quickly here, uh, gotta be so careful you're not getting into too much trouble down here with the two DNCs closing in in the back, of course, remember, they're going for a constructor's title, and, um, that's going to be problematic, I think, for them. Very problematic. As we go down into... Oh, Morse is pitting. So maybe that's the plan. Morse was going to pit. And, well... Yeah. So now Faust is your leader. Allison Holiday would get into the f would get into the specifics of the finer points of, I believe, the turn four wall as... Uh, she slides wide and gets into those little uh, styrofoam blocks there. She would continue, however. Here is Gretchen Faust pitting. And if you look at the lap times that everybody's pit, remember, Tim Morse came in on 14. That would get him to 28. Faust came out on 15. That would get her to 30. There's 29 laps in this race. Could be an interesting showdown now. 
Surprised we have not seen a safety car in this race, to be honest with you, with how aggressive this track is. Here comes Faust out of the pits. And where is Morse? Where is Tim Morse? Yes, that's a good question. Way behind Faust, actually. Faust is, I think, the leader of the race, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or Carter Fitzgerald just snookered everybody and took the lead. No, Fitzgerald is not in the lead. Fitzgerald's a lap behind. We'll, we'll catch up on where everybody is currently running, so this is a very confusing situation with the pit stop cycle, so we'll get back to that in a sec. So right now, as we take a look here... Faust is running fourth. Third is currently DJ Curtis, who outdid Faust there on that pit cycle. I think the 88 of Freeze is leading this race right now. With Vershagen running second, and third is DJ Curtis, so... Vershagen's going to have to try and play good teammate here, even though Vershagen's in the time of his life right now. He's going to be in a silver speed car, driver two for silver speed next year. But um, he'll be the second pilot. But now he's currently the second pilot filling in for Cody Lamas, and Freeze is leading this race. And Freeze has more wins, I think, than anybody else. And with Noah Hart not having a good race here, this could be critical for his championship hopes. Critical for them. If he can hold this off. If he can pull this off, this is critical. There's a lot of slow lap cars in front of him, too. And this track hasn't been the easiest for lap cars to go by. I think they're giving the 34 a warning for uh, blue flag violation here. And ooh. Yeah, definitely. That should be a warning because he really held up. Freeze and Freeze had to put Abbott in the wall because of the hold up there. And I'm wondering if they're going to give Freeze a driver conduct warning. And they are giving Freeze a driver conduct warning, so apparently they didn't like the fact that they put, that uh, Freeze put the uh, 070 into the fence. Oh, we got a crash in front of Freeze! That is Quinn Kelly and Bethany Woodard. And that's right in front of second and third place of DJ Curtis. There's Faust going by on the inside. We got a crash! The second, third, and fourth are all wrecked! And that's going to be a safety car right there. That's going to be. So Quinn Kelly and the 95 wreck. They're getting going again. And then they're still racing there. Faust dives low. And everybody's into the grass then. And I'm guessing that incident is, yes, it is under investigation. It is under investigation right now. Oh, but there's Woodard getting into the wall. And this happened with a lot of strong cars. Vershagen didn't make the right move by going to the outside here, but his race is just going to go completely upside down. Not literally, though, but completely out of this park when he gets wrecked there basically out of nowhere. We're on board with Gretchen Faust here. Faust makes the right move going low, but... Again, three wide there. Was that a racing deal or not? Faust is a major championship contender. Here goes Faust down low. Could Faust have made that corner? That's a big question. Here it is again, and this view I think will be telling. Faust could have gone lower, I think. But will they count that as a racing deal? So this is our first road course safety car, I think, ever in Arkansas. Uh, I don't think we've ever done one before. Um, Vince Freeze leads over Gretchen Faust, who's a number of cars back. They should be going green this time, actually, but we're hearing that Faust might... They're, they're definitely looking at Faust's involvement in that wreck. And remember, Faust is a major championship contender. Major championship contender. Tim Morris is in third with Ryan Griffin in fourth, Russ Pliskin fifth, and uh, Bobby Jones sixth. Uh, the 16 of Shepard seventh, Ryan Matthews eighth. Finally, Ryan Matthews seems to be having a decent day. 
Ninth is Pip Longstocking and 10th is Zayden Davidson. So, again, Vince Freeze is in a position where he can do quite well, I think, today because he doesn't have anybody near him that's racing him. And I'm sure it will be a controversial move here, but the official stewards have decided to black flag the 46 car. So the 46 will have to make a stop-go penalty for that incident when uh, racing resumes. So the 46 will lose second position. This is going to dramatically help out Noah Hart, who... I don't believe it's in the points either. I believe Hart might be out. Now that I think about it, where is Noah Hart actually? Let's take a look here. Where is the five car currently running? Oh no, he's down in 11th, so this will actually really help out Noah Hart here. But the 46 of Gretchen Faust will have to make a penalty stop once they go back green. I mean... You can't say anything other than she knew what was coming, I think. We're going to go green this time. The 88 card gets green flag there. It's going to be controversial, but the 46 and second way back here has to pick. Has to pick. That's going to put Morse in second position right then and there. Hopefully there's no more safety cars the rest of the way. Oh, Matthew's in the fence. He was running 10th there. Oh, we got a car around in the back. That's Fitzgerald around. Fitzgerald does get going. The field does a great job avoiding Carter Fitzgerald, but that is going to be oh so terrible for Carter Fitzgerald. Oh, no, Fitzgerald's in the fence hard. And that's going to be another safety car, I think. Oh, Faust is also wrecked in the back as well. That will be another safety car because Gretchen Faust, or I'm sorry, Carter Fitzgerald is stuck down there. And that is a safety car. So this is Gretchen, or the, Gretchen Faust wrecks in front of Carter Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald goes wide, gets into Tanner Hill. Around goes Fitzgerald. Everybody does an awesome job missing that incident there. Fitzgerald gets going again here. Ryan Matthews dives underneath. Was that on Ryan there? Was that on their teammate? Oh, that's an interesting move there because that was a team car there. All right, we're going to have to take a look. And luckily, they actually had the blimp cam over this we're hearing. Was Ryan Matthews a little too overzealous here? Dives underneath Carter. He was a lot lower. I, I will give Ryan credit. He was a lot lower than Faust was when that incident happened, on the last incident. So, yeah, no further action taken on that incident there. Uh, considering Fitzgerald got the worst of it, and it, the first part of the incident was Fitzgerald's fault, and Matthews did try and make the corner. We're going to take a look at it again here. Matthews was at least on the curbing trying to make a move here. Actually, that might have been on Woodard more than anybody. Oh, now Woodard's under investigation now. Greg Woodard is, but... That could be interesting. Although I'm guessing Woodard might be out of the race with that anyway. Yeah, Woodard is out. Yeah, Greg Woodard out of the race, but... um, Possible uh, thing there for... Greg Woodard there. That could have been a penalty. So what Arksa decided to do was initially clear the 46's black flag from the first safety car incident. And what they've done now is they've reissued it for after this um, situation. So the 46 will come down pit road at the conclusion of the first green flag lap back green again. So that could be an interesting uh, showing there. Tim Morse is also closer than... Um, Faust ever was to catching Vince Freeze here in the lead. But not too long left in this event. Hopefully, no more silly incidents. That would be the hope. But um, with how difficult this track can be, would not surprise me if we have another one. Uh, another safety car, possibly to end this race, too. Uh, considering how um, difficult this track can be. 
So the 46 will have to bring it down. A bad day for the 46, to be honest with you. But here we go. Vince Freeze immediately jumps on the gas. Coming out of that corner. Green flag is out. Down to turn one he goes. Uh, Morse is already trying to get by Rich Roy. He needs to get by as many cars as possible to get going here. And it looks like he will do that. Uh, third place car is Ryan Griffin a little further back. And here we go. Up the hit, up the infield section here, and Roy is not playing nice with him. I, I'm guessing that there are still blue flags on restarts. Just a thought. Roy gets out of the way. Oh, Pericles off the track. Pericles in the fence. He does keep it green, thankfully, but oh, problems for the 17 car as well. Yeah, 17 would lose control down here in turn number three. Roundy would go into the wall there. He would be able to actually get that car fired and drive it back, though. Morse is chugging off cars here, but Freeze has clear track in front of him. There's only one car in between them. I believe Morse is actually a little quicker, probably on raw pace, than Freeze is. But again, it all comes down to uh, pacing right now. Same incident as earlier with uh, William Brock, but uh, Zachary Fitzwater would lose control of the car and back it over there. Luckily, he was off the track, so they were able to push that car into that gateway back there. They only threw out a local yellow for this, so that's a good thing they did. Here comes Gretchen Faust for her penalty stop for that first incident there. Um, so this is finally she's able to serve that stop. Oh, looks like Pericles, the lap car, has a bunch of damage as well, so that was probably another incident there as well. He's trying to get that fixed and get back out there. But we would get a safety car here. This is Noah Hart. He had a mechanical problem. Our point leader, he was going to make up so many points here, but he breaks down in the chicane here and can't get to the inside, so he's going to have to stop on track, and that's going to be a safety car possibly ending this event. At the same time, there was another incident on track in which uh, this happened off the track, thankfully, but uh, Nick Pericles would wreck it into the uh, styrofoam barriers down there, so luckily they were able to have that one off the track, so I don't think they would have thrown a yellow for it, but man, very crazy end of the race. And this isn't what Vince Freeze wants to see because they're probably going to go back green, I think. But there is a car in between Morse and Freeze here, and a car then in between Morse and uh, Griffin as well there, so lap cars could be a big factor in this is if Abbott doesn't make Morse's life difficult, he might have a run on freeze, but um, that's all up to Carol Abbott. They would in fact get Noah Hart refired again here, and um, it was must have been a really small issue with that uh, car there, so that could be um, very interesting as we get going here, but um, Noah Hart is not running in a good spot. Running, actually, he's still in the points, so that's an interesting thought. So we'll see how this pulls off for Hart. And now it's the 88 car with only two to go. It's going to be a two-lap dash here at the end for um, this race. Tim, it's uh, Vince Freeze, Tim Morris, Ryan Griffin, and then I believe fourth position right now is Bobby Jones with Pliskin fifth, and then the 16 car of Shepard sixth. Wow, Shepard's outperforming Hart. That's something you don't see every day. But it's all going to come down to the restart of Vince Freeze here with two to go. Hopefully, we will stay green this whole distance. If not, the race will be over. So next flag ends this event. Green flag is out, and away we go. Down towards turn one they go. And so far, so good. Hadeland and Shepard, and I'm sorry, um, Sanders are coming into the pits. And Freeze got a great start there. Very strong start, and it looks like Abbott is becoming a bit of a problem here for Tim Morse to get by. Oh, Faber in the fence. Could this be the end? We got a stack up. We got a stack up. This is what caused a couple other incidents there. Michaels wisely backs out of it there. Oh, if Michaels wouldn't have done that, that could have been a lot worse. Jamison Moore off the track as well. Oh, Matthews and oh, that's a big hit there. But luckily, I think it's not in an area that you're typically going to see cars end up. I think they're going to keep it green for now. Look at the lead. 
What happened to... What happened to Morse? Morse lost a bunch of time there. We're gonna have to go back and see what happened to Tim Morse. Because Griffin's in second. Oh, right here. That is a big incident there between the two cars. And that's going to lose a number of spots for Tim Morse. We're on the white flag and Russell Plissken and Bobby Jones have wrecked now. And we've got the 35 still stopped down there. They're going to keep it green. I don't know what they're thinking, Arkansas is. But the 35 is still down in the corner down there. We have to see what happened to the 29 of Bobby Jones there, because he was running, I believe, top five. And this was all Caitlin Tannerhill sliding wide there, hits in there, and that's where Pliskin gets a piece. Morse is actually, I think, going to be back up to third. There goes Kelvin by everything. Captain opportunistic there after the uh, Indy 250. Lance Kelvin there. But. It's not going to be enough for anybody. Vince Freeze is in his own zip code now because he seemingly kept all of his car under him here. Vince Freeze has to just make it through the last chicane one more time. The front stretch chicane. And Vince Freeze is going to win the Roval. Second position is going to be Ryan Griffin out of nowhere. And third position, I believe, is Sam at Hoskins who just came out of nowhere. That's your podium here at, um, oh, here at Charlotte. Let's take a look at your full finishing results. Vince Freeze is your victor today with Ryan Griffin second, Sam at Oskin third, uh, Takumi Hirano fourth, Aiden Shepard fifth, Tim Moore sixth, Noah Hart seventh, Joshua Michaels eighth, Jameson Moore ninth, Sean Ard tenth, Zayden Davidson eleventh, Sh Nick, or Russ, Russ Pliskin twelfth, Lance Calvin, 13th. Calvin was doing so well, too. But I think he got a big piece of damage in that incident as well. Longstocking, 14th. Jones, 15th. Uh, Faber, 16th. Tanner Hill, 17th. Abbott, 18th. Um, 19th goes to Kiderman, 20th. To Brian Matthews, 21st. To Rich Roy, 22nd. To Gretchen Faust, 23rd. To Chase Dunbar, 24th. To Costra. And the last car on points is Jesse Turner, Sanders, Hadline, Fitzwater, Mo or Monaco, Pericles, Brock, Woodard, Fitzgerald, Curtis, Vershagen, Kelly, Woodard, Holiday, Grainer, Griffith, and Erkins all did not score any points. Bad day for the Lycoya team. And uh, Noah Hart got lucky today. He should have not been in the points, but when everybody decided to throw their brain out the window, Noah Hart ended up winning the thing, or ended up becoming the big winner in points today. Let's take a look at your points, leaving this round. With only two races remaining in the schedule, there's only two drivers left. Noah Hart has a massive point lead over Vince Freeze. Vince Freeze basically needs to win both Talladega and Ice Planet. And Noah Hart doesn't need to score points. Uh, the lowest amount of points you can have from Noah Hart right now is 720 and still be mathematically eligible. Freeze is on 737. That's a big gap to be fighting back. That's a 133-point gap. I don't think, realistically, I think Noah Hart's going to win this early, to be honest with you. I mean, Hart has just been ungodly consistent all year. As we go down the order here, we're only going to be taking a look at the driver's points. We'll take a look at constructors after Talladega. But, um, yeah. What can you say? It's just been... It's going to come down to Talladega now for Noah Hart. Ken, if Hart gets enough points, he's won the championship a race early. A race early, Noah Hart will. So that could be a big, big day for him. With that being said, we'll see you at the round of Alabama at Talladega Super Speedway.